Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. It's really exciting always to see how you care about our small corner of the world. And we have a very distinguished panel, Gabi and Dani. Thank you for joining me. I'll, if it's okay, we'll go by first name basis. Absolutely. Great, that's so nice to interview Israelis because we can always do that. Um, I want to start, um, we are looking ahead the opportunities and challenges facing Israel and now that we've celebrated 70 years and we're looking forward for our next 70 years, right? I want to take you to two weeks from now, May, this, I think, is going to be a great challenge for Israel. If you look at the calendar, we are heading for a week that could easily spread into years. Because if we go to the 12th of May, then we understand that the president might go ahead and nix the deal, which is a big drama. And then we have 13th of May, which is Jerusalem and the, uh, Unification Day, which is always a volatile day. A day after it, the 14th, a big ceremony in Jerusalem. Maybe the President of the United States will even be there himself in person to open the embassy. A, a very, very dramatic move in any, by any means. Turn the calendar, the 15th, it's like that's not enough. We have the Nakba day. The Hamas and the PA have already said that they're going to make a point of explaining to the world why Israel's establishment is their disaster and they, um, and they are building up the memento for a big march towards the borders of Israel. And that was the 15th of May, right? Look at all these events. We come with the 16th of May, which is the opening of the Ramadan. So we have one week in which all the conflicts and all the vectors that influence the region tie up together. And I wanted to start with you, uh, General Ashkenazi, and ask you, when, when you look at the disaccumulation of events, what do you see coming in the horizon, in the near horizon? Well, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, to anticipate the future. But I think the good, the good news are definitely Jerusalem. And I think every Israeli, every Jew has to be very pleased about it. Hopefully, as you said, the president will join. Um, the, the two major issues, I think, it's the um, uh, president's decision on the uh, nuclear uh, agreement, deal, whatever, which I think it will nix it, and I think that's also a good news. You think that nixing the deal is good news? Yeah. I think finally the world, and I'm glad that America under this president and under his administration understand the real nature of Iran. Uh, the real question is, if that will be the, the, the president's uh, decision, it's what the Iranian will do. And I guess we will discuss it, but, and the real issue will be if they will decide to enrich or to go to the bomb. That's the real question for America, for us, and for the West. And we might discuss this as well. The other issue is the Palestinian. The Palestinian, the men, the main you know, concern is Gaza, but we can deal with it. They already started with this, and the um, defense Talking minister. about the marches towards yeah. the fence. Uh, that, I, think that's, uh, I don't think anyone in the West Bank is going to do a second intifada. There, uh, there is no will, there is no incentive. Yeah, we will see some protests or whatever. The real issue is whether the Hamas uh, will be able to mobilize more people than they are currently uh, mobilized. But, you know, at the end of the day, we cannot and we should not allow to any Gazan to cross the fence. It's a, it's, it's a Hamas choice, really. Uh, much has been said about their choice and what to invest and instead of, uh, you know, imp improving the Gazan life. And it's not our decision. We are ready to facilitate whatever they decide to make Gaza better, reconstruction, whatever. But it's their choice, and I completely trust, knowing the commanders and the general staff and the soldiers, I completely trust that the IDF will stand still and will prevent them from, uh, you know, uh, bridging the fence, destroying the fence, or whatever. So I'm not as concerned. It's a mixture of feeling. I, 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 think, uh, I think most Israelis will be pleased to see the embassy and the, the decision on, on the deal, hopefully the right decision. 
Uh, but it's it's time until there. We still anticipate uh, a Iran, uh, Iranian response for the last attack. Might change the entire, you know, mood and, and situation. So basically, uh, we're coming to this, and that's my point, we're coming to this event very strong. The situation today in Israel is not like before. When I was young lieutenant in Yom Kippur, well, everyone understood what would be the consequences if the division or the Syrian division will pass our position in the Golan Heights. It's the Hula Valley and the Fula. That's not the case. We are the strongest military now today from Libya to India. So we can face it. Ambassador um, Danon, um, could this historical and overdue decision about Jerusalem um, backlash in the international arena? We have seen the, uh, what has happened just in recent weeks where the Hamas has finally managed to get the international community to stand by them and again attack Israel and try it harder to, you know, to support, the, to, to supply information for the BDS and the anti-legitimization anti of Israel. What are you preparing to do in, the, for, in that? Scenario. Boker Tov, good morning. I'm happy to be here again to see so many friendly faces. I'm not used to it. Dana, we are getting ready for uh, this uh, important week. In two weeks, first of all, in the Security Council, all the permanent members will wake up and they will see a new reality when President Trump will decide to fix or to nix this bad agreement. In terms of the Palestinians, they started already. Every Friday, we see those pictures when they send women and children to the fence, using them as human shields, and the Hamas leaders hiding behind. This is pure evil, what we see. And we expect we will see more of it coming when we come to this crucial week. For us, we expect emergency session of the Security Council, of the General Assembly. But when we look at our history, we shouldn't run our foreign policy according to threats. And we are grateful for President Trump for finally taking this bold decision of moving the American Embassy to Jerusalem. And we encourage all countries to do the same, to move their embassies to Jerusalem, even if it means that we will have to work harder in the UN, even if it means that our boys and girls in the IDF will have to protect our borders harder. This is the meaning of living in a Jewish nation, choosing our capital, and we are proud of it. And I know, you know, Ambassador Nikki Haley, by the way, she's a great ambassador. <laughs> when Ambassador Nikki Haley called me two days before the announcement, and we, we spoke about what will happen at the UN, and we spoke about counting the votes, what will happen in Israel, I told her, Ambassador Haley, let's wait for a minute. What we are doing now, it, we are making history. In 50 years, people will, will learn in textbooks about this crucial vote at the UN. So I think people will learn about this historical week, about the embassy finally being open, and we will see more countries. By the way, let's not forget Guatemala. If you are going to Israel, the 16th, right on if the you're 16th. going to Israel for the American ceremony, stay for the Guatemala ceremony as well. Is anyone going in the crowd? Is anyone coming? Okay, look, great. We have guests coming. So yeah, I have to mention Guatemala on the 16th. They're opening their embassy uh, too, and the, the president might come of Guatemala. Um, and, uh, General Ashkenazi, I want to get you back to Iran, as you mentioned. Now, Israel, and we've already heard, I think we heard it from Defense Minister uh, Avigdor Lieberman uh, on the stage with Yaakov Katz. He was very clear, and he said, Israel will do whatever it needs and any cost to prevent Iran from making um, Syria forefront base to Israel. Do you agree with this, agree with this red line? And could you try and explain what it means in reality? What does it mean to impose such a red line for Israel? Where can it take us? Yeah, um, first of all, I agree. But uh, I think the um, strategic reality in the North is changing, is evolving as we speak. Uh, and we have to admit that the bad guys won the war, not the good guys. I mean, Iranian, Assad, Hezbollah, and, uh, and the Russian, of course. And uh, that's not a good development for us. Um, um, my understanding that the Iranian objective is to create in Lebanon, in Syria, um, the same model as they have 
in Lebanon, meaning to create the Syrian Hezbollah with Shiites affiliated and militia and the missiles, um, missiles um, capability more accurate, more, uh, more dangerous. And I think it's, uh, I think it's just uh, by our side not to allow it. The question is, what is the best way to achieve it? I think we have to add to the equation another element. See, the most vulnerable uh, players that can give us leverage in order to persuade the Iranian and the Russian to restrain the Iranian from doing that is Assad. I cannot understand why Assad participated in a game and is not paying for the ticket. So my, my suggestion is that if tomorrow morning another drone will be launched from Syrian soil to Israel, we have to destroy the drone and, and, and whatever it's the command and control post, but Assad has to pay. Assad, the military capability. That's the only way we will, can move the Russian to restrain the Iranian. And I don't think we have to do it alone. Uh, the Russian are not partner to our concern there. We, we have to admit. They own to the Iranian um, a lot. Uh, the Iranian... Uh, demonstrate or replace Russian troops on the ground by Hezbollah and others and sacrifice a lot. So, and the war is not really over, although it was won, but it's not really over. So I think we have to uh, see um, Assad regime as accountable as well. It's from Syrian soil on his invitation and we are not, uh, we should not address or engage only with the Iranian there. So interesting, you're saying I support the red lines of the, this administration, of Netanyahu's administration, but you suggest to add another player to the equation, another, another figure to the equation. Um, Danny, um, Dan we, we have to be very, um, uh, we have to be on time, and I want to talk about time. I want to take this discussion a bit to a higher level. We're talking about, we're entering our 71st year, Israel is a miracle, no doubt. When you look at Israel, when you look at the region, when you look at the international um, community, how would you answer this question, which I think, I call it the T-app. I think it's really, it's, it, it really helps you understand where people stand on, on Israel, the conflict or whatever. Is time working for or against Israel? Dana, we Israelis would like to complain a lot about everything. But I just came back from Israel uh, where I headed a mission of ambassadors. 40 ambassadors. We went to Auschwitz-Birkenau, and then we came to celebrate our independence. And the ambassadors told me, Danny, it's a miracle, and we should not take it for granted. And I think we should be very optimistic today about what we achieved in short 70 years. We have a great... <laughs> we have a great relationship with the United States of America. It's not given that the Vice President will come to participate in an event of the Israeli mission to the UN last November, and that President Trump is considering to come to Israel again in two weeks. That's my headline for the 8 o'clock news. You just put it out there. Everyone can steal it. <laughs> we should be grateful for that. And also, I remember when I was in the Security Council in December 2016, when President Obama decided to push forward the shameful resolution to condemn Israel, to condemn our presence in the old city. I was by myself in the Security Council. And here we are today, we have so many friends, we have strong supporters of Israel, we have countries that want to do more with Israel, so I'm very optimistic. Yes, we have challenges, we have threats, but if we look at what we have today, we should be thank Hashem, first of all, and thank one each other for what we achieved so far. I want to, just before you answer, so I want to ask you, uh, General Ashkenazi, I want to ask you the same question, but I would like you to put into the equation the conflict, the Palestinian, Israeli Palestinian conflict, and ask you when you look at that, is time working for or against Israel? How should we, how should we deal that? How should we look at that? Well, in general, to be short, I think uh, our major ja uh, challenge is not external. Uh, we can handle with the uh, strategic. Uh, landscape outside the border of Israel. We have a good and probably the best administration. We have a strong military. I think it's within the Israeli society. That's what concerns me. I think we have to change talking about equation. We have to change the equation where less and less Israelis, unfortunately, serving the country, going to a proper education, getting a good job, paying tax, while they are carrying on their back 
a growing number of youngsters who are not serving, not working, not paying tax. You know, Israel, <laughs> I'm a son to uh, both parents, immigrant, I came from abroad, and I think it's a story about people, a, a wonderful story about people who fulfill, fulfilled uh, a dream generation. I think the strength of Israel is steam and the rise from these, our solidarity. And I'm deeply concerned when I look in our society and see that this, is, this solidarity is, is, is eroding. It's, it's, we are not in the right place. Uh, the future in Israel is really depends on our strength as a society, as a united, solidarity, strong society. And we have to work on that. Thank you so much. And I think this is the essence of Israel, where you can find a general sitting on stage, and instead of talking about security, he will talk about solidarity. So I think this is also what makes us very strong. General Ashkenazi and Ambassador Danon, thank you so much for taking the time. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.